Hi, I'm Catherine Alice Michaels. Welcome to my studio. I make artist books. I'm a letterpress printer. I work with fabric. I print from wood. I print from wood type. I print from metal type. I cut linoleum. I print on film. I print on magnets. I do all kinds of things with ink. Most of the printing I do ends up turned into artist books. I've been printing and making artist books for over 30 years. Most of those books have been inspired by nature. Nature is my connection to my grandmother, my ancestors. It's my connection to the present. And I love plants, gardening, growing things. And I'm very interested in how plants have been used through the centuries in cultures all over the world. This is my press, May. She's a Chandler and Price from 1890. And this is my press named Lucy. Lucy with an L-O-O-S-E-Y. <laughs> she had a few loose parts when I got her and needed some work. She was made in 1940. What's really important to me in my studio is that I can see out the window. I can see my garden. I can see the cedar trees. I can see the sky, the weather. I can stand here and daydream. I can look for inspiration and just stay connected. I want to feel connected. When I come out to my studio, what feels really great to me is that I feel surrounded by my friends. I have my friends' work up on the walls along with my own, and I'm inspired by that work and just feel their creative energy standing beside me, keeping me company while I work. The title of my show is Root Bound. The title came from thinking about both nature and movement, and movement in lots of different ways, movement in my body, movement in my life, feeling like I'm sort of at a precipice in my career. I've been making books for 30 years. I've been printing. I'm starting to do more sewing, more textile work. I've also been working a lot more outside the studio. I felt, I think during COVID, this time of metamorphosis, of like going into a cocoon. I'm also menopausal. This time of going into cocoon and, and seeing what will emerge. So the bound part of root bound refers both to being too tight, being wrapped up, in something, but it also is about, you know, bounding along, homeward bound, like you're going somewhere. So that was really important to me. And then the root of root bound is about my connection to nature, my love of nature. Root bound together then becomes about that transformational process. When a plant gets too tight in the pot and it's time to be repotted, what is that process? What's it going to look like? What's great about having antique printing presses is both the power of the press and just the durability that they have. They're made to last forever. And when we were all getting worried in 1999 about Y2K, I got this great New Year's postcard from Tracy Hahn that says, letterpress, Y2K compliant since the 15th century. And it made me laugh, and I've kept it up in my studio ever since. No matter what happens, I'm still going to be able to print on this press, and that makes me really happy. And I applied for a creative residency at Bloedel on Bainbridge Island, and I was accepted for 2020, May of 2020, and then it was canceled because of COVID. And they held a spot for me for May of 2021. I think residencies are a little terrifying because there's a lot of pressure on that period of time. What are you going to make? Is it going to be good? I imagine going there as a writer, you just have to write. And I'm sure writers don't feel that way. But going there as a book artist and printmaker, 
I didn't know how I was going to work in that space. There's no presses. I had to bring everything. And I didn't really have a solid idea. It had been COVID and I didn't have a lot of inspiration during that time. I wasn't making a lot. And I think like a lot of people, we were just watching the news and watching things unfold and waiting to see what was going to happen. So when I got to Bloedel, it was on May 3rd. It was two days after my birthday. I think May is the best time in the Pacific Northwest. Everything's blooming. It's beautiful. The trees, the flowers, the greens are such a beautiful green. And I was a little worried I was going to be all by myself living on 250 acres for three weeks. And I thought maybe I'd be a little scared, but I wasn't. I just arrived with everything in my car that I could imagine I might want to make while I was there. Materials, ideas, paper. I borrowed a little tabletop press from someone. I just didn't know what I was going to do, but I had everything that I needed to do it. I was there just for a few days, and what occurred to me was I wanted to be printing from wood rounds. And I had started prepping some pieces with my husband, Bill Moody, but I hadn't tried it yet. And suddenly here I was at Bloedel at my residency with everything else around me except the wood. So Bill drove it up to me, all these wood rounds, and I started inking and printing the wood rounds. I started on paper, experimenting with different pieces and different colors and different ways of layering and using the wood rounds. And then I switched to fabric. I didn't know how pristine the residency was, so I brought some sheets to put down on the floor. And instead I picked those sheets up, I ripped them down, and I dyed them in pots on the kitchen stove. I had some avocados that I'd brought to eat, and I used the pits and the skins for kind of a peachy color. I had frozen blueberries I brought, and I used those for a tinge of lavender. And I pulled the teas out of the cupboard, and I used those in another pot. It was really, really fun. I just kept going on these strips of cotton, playing with all the different shapes, seeing what they looked like, what they looked like in different colors, putting the prints in juxtaposition with each other. And then I started adding slabs of wood as well, and that was really fun. While I was doing all this experimentation, one of the greatest gifts to me was that I was just playing. Usually when I start a project, I know exactly what I want it to look like, or at least I think I do when I jump in. I've got the words designed and the image designed in my mind, and I know what I want to make. When it came to printing the wood rounds, I had no plan at all. I'd never even done it before. So it was just a lot of play and experimentation. Every morning at Bloedel, I would get up, I would eat a little breakfast, and then I would walk all the trails before Bloedel opened for the day. Then I would come back to my space and I would start printing. And I would print for however long and you know take breaks and everything. And then again, go out and walk all the trails when Bloedel closed. Sometimes I did this three or four times a day, but I always did it at least twice before they opened and after they closed. And it was really an amazing experience. And I'm confident in saying that the walking all the trails fed the printing that I was doing. I came to know Bloedel very well, and I felt like Bloedel came to know me. It felt very personal. I had ferns that I saw when they were just little babies and I would check on them every day as they unfurled and their leaves got longer and longer. There was a roadie that I saw bloom when I first arrived and I watched it every day. There were a lot of things I photographed every day. I came to know some of the ravens by their voice. I'd gone into a deeper world at Bloedel where I didn't feel just like a tourist anymore. I felt like I was one of them. I was one of all of them. I was an animal in an animal body. And that's what happened with the prints. I was printing all these pieces from wood and then the wood prints became animal bodies. They came alive and I related to that with my own animal body. 
The last things I printed on this press were from my pandemic post series. We knew COVID was happening and I just wondered what was I gonna do? And I felt like it was really important to do something. I came out to my studio every week and I printed something I could send to elderly people that I knew who were in their homes with no one else. I sent it to people who were frontline workers. I sent it to people in Korea, in New York State, you know, sort of the hot spots where I knew people were living. I didn't know all these people. I found people, I heard about people. I reached out to artists whose address I had, but I didn't know them and just started mailing these out. And it was amazing because other artists started doing the same thing as well, all over the country and the world, actually. These letterpress printed cards were flying from one artist to another and community to another community. And it was just amazing. And I have a whole box of them that people sent me. And I myself printed a total of 14. The first 11, came out in the first 12 weeks of the pandemic. And so that meant once a week, I was designing something, I was printing it, I was collating it or putting it together, or adding collage or whatever went on it, and I was hand addressing all of these things and putting them in the mail. One of the people who has had a big influence on recent works that I've been doing is Diana Waymar. And she's a stitch artist who works on fabric and does a lot of subversive stitching. Subversive stitching is a movement that's been happening for some time. And it's taking this idea of domestic skills and subverting them and using them in a political context. One of the first pieces I made with that in mind is called Trial by Fire. Trial by Fire was inspired by a bunch of these cooking pots. I've ruined about four or five of them, leaving them on the stove until they've boiled dry and gotten really hot and the coating has come off. There have been a few that I have had to actually put in the garbage. It was really kind of sad for me. I just felt like I was getting really forgetful. I was ruining these pots. And I wanted to redeem the pots and I wanted to redeem myself a little bit. And I was thinking about how a pot is a container. So it could be a binding. It could bind a book if I could figure out what the book was. And I came up with the idea of pot holders. And then with the idea of pot holders, I was thinking about menopause, perimenopause, the hot flashes, the symptom of forgetfulness that is often ascribed to menopause and perimenopause. And I was thinking about all the stories that I could tell that I could embroider onto the potholders. And that's how Trial by Fire was born. So these stories are about menopause, about my experience with hot flashes and insomnia and forgetfulness. But there's also some stories from puberty. And then, of course, I also reference the witch trials of Europe when, you know, thousands of women were burned at the stake. And as it turns out, the demonologists of that time had a list for the signs of being a witch. And those signs were synonymous with the symptoms of menopause. I live out here in the woods. It's pretty quiet. It's nice to have visitors. So I thought if I invited people to come visit in my studio and do a print, I could lure people out here. So what we did is we started with the idea of printing something based on three, six, or 12. And if everyone did that, they would register to each other. They'd all have a center point and they wouldn't overlap each other because every design is different, but they would all be cohesive and work well together if they were all based on the same geometry patterns. This has been an incredible process and project for me. I think Bill and I have done this about six or seven times 
and every time it's really different. It's not always the same people. We will teach anyone to do their drawing with a compass and straight edge, transfer it to the linoleum, and do the cutting. Once the cutting's done, they go on the printing press on the Vandercook, and we print them, changing out the ink colors frequently and changing out the plates. And you see these beautiful images start to come off the paper. So when people come into my studio to print with me, I want them to have a good time. I want them to learn something about printing if I know more than them, which isn't always the case. But mostly I think I look to be inspired by people. I look for new thinking, new ways of seeing. We're all limited by what we already know. And the only way for me to know more is by spending time with other people learning their techniques, learning how they see, seeing how they make decisions. That's the way I learned to print from the very beginning, and I'm still learning.